Finally, Apple debuts Vision Pro. That's right. Uh, you had tried the headset before mm -hmm. uh, at an earlier stage, and then well, I talked you, about that in abundance, and then did. everybody dug up my comments, uh, that, which they had had to kind of miss the first time, and then, <laughs> the, 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 then everyone was dig, 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 digging it up because I guess I, apparently I'm only one of the only people who was was willing to willing to say something. <laughs> so, did you see the debut as well? Oh, of course. Uh, good. And what did so? What up? What do you think? Hey, did they nail th it? I think that there's things that I would do differently if I were Apple. But uh, what if, did they do right? <laughs> and I, that's, that's what I was going to say. They did basically everything, everything right. They didn't do anything, anything, any, anything terrible. I mean, I think Apple's going after the exact right segment of the market that Apple should be going after. So the, the thing you have to remember is different companies, I think, uh, have different products that are right for them to be building. I think if Apple had tried to go after the low end of the market, that would have been a mistake. They are taking the exact approach that I had always wanted Apple to take and really the approach that Oculus had been taking in the early years. You know, I uh, actually went, when, when Apple, when Apple, when Apple launched the, the vision pro, I, I retweeted a tweet of my own from 2015, where I said that before VR can become something that everyone affo can afford, it must become something that everybody wants. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the approach Apple is taking. You know, they're, they're trying to go balls to the wall, the highest possible resolution, the, the, the highest quality possible displays, the best possible ergonomics. And uh, they're, they're, they're going all in on that with little regard for it being affordable for everyone. Sure. And I think that is actually the right approach for Apple to take right now. That yeah. approach will change. Obviously, they're going to do a cheaper version in the future. It, it, it boils my mind when you have all of these pundits coming out and saying, this is a blunder. It'll never go anywhere. Who the heck is going to spend $3,500? A yeah, lot of, course, of people. <laughs> yeah, well, that, and that, that's the real secret. There's a lot of people who are going to yeah. spend it. But more importantly, there's a hundred times more people who are going to spend a quarter of that when it gets to that sure. to that to that price. That's that that's really where you need to be looking at this. The the price right now, it's uh it, it's kind of irrelevant. That the people who are going to buy it at thirty five hundred dollars, we would have bought it at five thousand sure. dollars. We would have bought it at two thousand dollars. The price just doesn't matter for the group of early adopters that they're targeting. But what they're going to do is inspire lust in a much larger group of people who, uh, you know, as as I dreamed all those years ago, see VR as something they desperately want before it becomes something they can afford. Yeah, people have to desire it. I had this experience when I was trying to price my zero G flights. You know, I wanted to get the price below 2000, couldn't mm -hmm. get there originally. And I had it at 3,500 and then realized that the same number of people would pay 5,000 or 7,500 bucks. Yep. And, you know, having a viable company and product that people aspire to is super valuable. And then eventually get the price down as we always do. What do you, what are the features that you think are the most important that, that surprised you in the, uh, in the Vision Pro? Oh man, let me see. Things that are surprising. I don't want to sound arrogant here, but most of the things are just things that I, yeah, I, 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 can I, I totally you've expect. Been, you've been. I, 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 yeah. What, I mean, what they're doing, when I, when I say they're doing it right, they're doing things that people have have, have talked about as yeah. the right thing to do for a very, very long time. Um, I mean, I found one the of the thing, one of the things, okay, you know, one thing I'm surprised on a little bit is that Apple did go for having the external puck uh, tethered battery. to the headset. To be clear, that is the right way to do things. And I was a big advocate of this in Oculus. Unfortunately, it was a battle that I lost in my waning years. Mm -hmm. And uh, they they went they went all in on putting the batter all the batteries, putting all the processing in the actual headset itself, and not just in the headset, but in the front of the headset itself, which hugely increases the weight of the front of the device and the off you know the a the asymmetric torque load and it's it's not a good decision. The fact that Apple did that was something I was afraid they wouldn't do because it does look less cool than having it all in one kind of magical thing that you just put on your head. Yep. But getting the weight off of your head is so important, especially for the future. I think the real reason Apple got the battery off of the head is not because this device couldn't have had a battery on, let's say, the back of the headset and been fine. It's because they are setting that expectation in people that it's okay to have it off of the head. So that in the future, they can add more processing. Then they can add more radios. They can add more batteries to an external puck rather than keeping it in the headset because that's what's going to allow the Apple device to become basically you know, a thin pair of glasses. As long as you're keeping all your processing and all of your battery and, and power in the headset, there's a limit to how small it can be. And that limit is somewhere around the size of VR headsets that you kind of see today. So take me there. Where is this going? I mean, 
what would you not be surprised by a decade from now? What's the, what's VR look like? Well, you're going to see a huge number of people that are wearing headsets used for AR and VR mm -hmm. every single day. Yeah. They're going to be using it continuously to blend the real world and the digital world seamlessly. They'll be going you know, between the two frequently, sending data between the two frequently, communicating with people who exist across both of those two planes continuously. And uh, that's, I, I, I think that we're likely to spend more of our waking moments with our reality augmented or augmediated or whatever you want to call it. You know, there's a, there's a million philosophical distinctions. I think we're going to spend more times, uh, more time looking at that augmented view than an unaugmented view. So living in the, in the virtual and augmented world. And, and do you think the headsets will get down to a pair of sunglasses? Do you? They're going to, I think they, here's the thing. I think that the headsets can get down to pair of sunglasses. I don't think they will. The reason for that is that you have to make certain trade-offs that get more and more extreme as you get to the far end of what you can do in terms of making a lightweight headset. I'd say think more kind of chunky sunglasses is probably where things are going. But when people say, is it ever gonna get to you know this thin pair of glasses? I say, you know what? It's possible to make a virtual reality headset or an AR headset within the laws of physics that fits in that form factor. But the quality of that experience is going to be so much worse than something just a little bit bigger that I think most people will opt for the thing that is a little bit bigger and a radically better experience. The real key here is a changing of social expectations. I mentioned this in abundance. Yeah. The real way Apple is going to make their headset cool and acceptable to wear in public is not through engineering. It's it it, it you know, it's still so, pretty big. Social engineering. It's social engineering. Yeah. It's 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 marketing. They're going to put it yeah. on the heads of the right celebrities. Yeah. They're going to put it on the heads of the right influencers. And just like that, boom, something that was lame will become cool. And it doesn't have to get any thinner or lighter. To yeah. you, will Will I am was at a three sixty speaking this year, and um, he wears these very large red glasses that there could be go. a VR. Could well, be a VR. Lady Gaga did the same thing. Yeah. You know, she really kicked off a trend a few years ago of wearing huge oversized sunglasses that are way too big for Getting reason. ready, getting ready. And that made, and that made it cool. I think yeah. Apple's going to do the exact same thing. They're going to make the big thing cool. And so by the time we have the chunky sunglasses, uh, I, I, I think we're going to be well past the question of will people wear on this? People will look back on this discussion as, as a quaint relic. They'll say, <laughs> man, can you believe people? There were, there were people who really thought that nobody would ever dare wear VR or AR glasses in public. It's just, it's, it's going to be, I think it's, it's going to seem bizarre to the, to, social, to the young kids. The social analogy is I remember the first time I watched people with earbuds walking around the street talking mm -hmm. to themselves. And it seemed just weird. Yep. And now it's totally socially acceptable. Oh, I mean, you can go back even further. People thought it was nuts when people were walking around with cell phones, even just talking on them. Yeah. You know, the, the idea that you would just be out in public using a piece of, you know, office telecommunications hardware seemed se seemed pretty bizarre. Uh, but now it's totally taken for granted. You you literally would not even, not, not only would you not think twice when you see it on the street, you don't even think about it. Yeah, it's uh, fully accepted.